Uh, let's get back to Afghanistan, General Votel. Um, do the Afghan people support the presence of the United States there? I, I believe that they. I believe that they do, Senator. And how do you measure that? I, I think we measure that by favorability ratings uh, that we see of them for the government of Afghanistan and the uh, and the activities that. Uh, uh, that they are pursuing, and I think we measure that through our uh, through our direct contact with them, with teams we have out there on the ground, and others that interact with uh, with the Afghan people on a regular basis. And uh, as a matter of fact, several years ago, there was a lawyer jurga con convened of most African, I mean, most Afghan leaders, and and they overwhelmingly were in support of the United States presence there to protect them against what had happened before. Uh, has there been another lawyer jurga, or or do we simply assume that the leadership of the elected leadership of the government represents them? Uh, I, I'm I'm I, there has not been another lawyer jurga. I think of the same scope that you that you referenced, uh, uh, Senator. Uh, but we do uh, pay attention to the the polling. I, I would note in some recent polls that I've seen, the favorability ratings for. Uh, for the Taliban are are very low in the six to seven percent range, as opposed to much much higher uh, for the government of Afghanistan. You had uh, strong praise for President Ghani. Um, how is the relationship uh, there between uh, the president and Mr. Abdullah, who was his? nearest competitor. It has uh, improved significantly, and I attribute that uh, directly to the engagement of our ambassadors on the ground who have been personally invested in that and worked that relationship, uh, and it has had a positive impact on our operations. Well, that's good to hear. Now, uh, the information we have, and the chairman alluded to this, um, the, the Afghan government controls 57 percent of the country's districts. Uh, a year and a half ago, that figure was 72 percent. What happened? I, I, think, I think the numbers, and, and, uh, and Senator, I, w I would tell you that there are other numbers out there. We, we have some slightly different ones, but they're in the general ballpark of what you're, what you're saying. Generally, those numbers are correct. In, in general. There, the, so there's been a significant drop, as the chairman said, in a year and a half. There has been uh, there have been areas uh, that uh, that are in what we would put into the contested uh, space area here that uh, that have increased uh, over 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 the last year. So and, certainly, and the, your testimony would be that this hasn't happened because the support among the African people of our efforts has diminished. No, I, I don't. I don't think so. I think this is uh, something this is we a, did. I think this is effect of the of the of the of the fighting that is taking place and of the efforts by the Taliban to be more resurgent in specific areas in Afghanistan. Well, okay, Senator, uh, General Nicholson said um, in talking about the stalemate that what will break the stalemate are um, offensive capabilities such as special forces and uh, allowing the Air Force to overmatch the Taliban. Um, also, um, he said, we have, a, we have a shortfall of a few thousand troops in Afghan for the train, advise, and assist mission. Would you talk about those two aspects, and would you support a few thousand more American troops to get the job done in this mission. Senator, with respect to the last part of your question, that's, uh, that's certainly a discussion we're having with the Secretary right now. I, I won't uh, pre-, pre uh, stage a, a decision here on him. That's certainly his regard, but uh, certainly I, 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 I agree with what, uh, with what uh, General Nicholson's approach is. And I do agree that uh, uh, you know, one of our efforts to uh, improve the capabilities and equipment of the Afghan Air Force is a big part of this, as is uh, improving and expanding their special operations capability. Thank you. General Waldhauser, um, the WASP uh, amphibious uh, expedition did over, over 100 consecutive days of strikes. It's considered to be uh, an impressive success. What lessons have we learned from that deployment, and are we sending you what you need to get the job done in that respect? The WASP and the Marine Aviation that was on board that ship was a significant contributor to the GNA forces and ridding CERT of ISIS. 
Um, lessons learned at the tactical level have to do with coordination on the ground and special forces oper and special forces who are there on the ground. But I think it's important to point out that there, over that from one August till middle of December, there were nearly 500 strikes. Most of them came from ISR uh, platforms, but a lot of them, as you said, came from the ship. And I think the ability of zero civilian casualties uh, in a very, very dense urban environment underscores the training and the professionalism of those who are conducting that operation. So in sum, uh, that was a huge asset for us. We actually borrowed it from CENTCOM in order to make it happen. But that's how we have to do business these days. We, we, there's the AFRICOM and CENTCOM coordinate on various trans-regional asset changes, and that was an example where it worked very well. Thank you, sir. Senator